Just Like Us, for LGBT young people. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 5 of the Just Like Us podcast. I'm Nora. And I am not Matthew, I'm Cloder. Absolute chaos. Uh, Matthew has graduated. We're very proud of him. Very proud of him. Uh, Which means he's left the Bristol JLU team for now. Um, So yeah, in the meantime, you've got me. Yeah, great. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about Section 28, a clause in the Local Government Act of 1988. And it meant that local authorities in school couldn't, quote unquote, promote homosexuality. Mm. So in effect, this meant that councils were prohibited from funding of books, plays, leaflets, films and other materials showing same-sex relationships. And teachers weren't generally allowed to teach about gay relationships in schools. Yeah. And then it was repealed in 2001 in Scotland and 2003 in the rest of the UK. Yeah, so surprisingly recent from mm. what you'd consider about the LGBT history. Um, obviously, because it was very much, a big part of it was focused in schools, this would really impact what JLU could have done. Um, so obviously, for, from our point of view, it's huge that it's been repealed. And even even now, some 15 years later, we're still feeling the effects of it. You're listening to Just Like Us, the monthly show for LGBT young people. Should we talk a little bit about kind of the history of it? Because obviously the 1980s was a very big time mm. for LGBT rights because there was, there was so much going on. Oh yeah, so much. Yeah, because homosexuality was kind of only decriminalized in the 1960s so this is only 20 years previous i think it's interesting actually because section 28 came out like a kind of turning point in history Mm. and a turning point in the wrong direction yeah in that things were fairly progressive in the 60s and 70s we got lots of uh civil right wins as it were yeah from across the board not just with lgbt rights Mm. but obviously with women with everything about african-american rights and things like that Mm. so it was just very very progressive and then the 80s happened and there was things kind of yeah turned the other way as it yeah, were yeah not for the better not for the better it's interesting there are lots of different reasons section 28 happened when it did mm. a big one i think was the AIDS crisis yes that led to lgbt people being quite demonized yes. in the media the public press tabloids mm. newspapers etc yeah um yeah. and it's interesting actually if you look at the like graphs of acceptance of homosexuality mm. there's a massive spike leading up to section 28 because i guess if you don't know what being gay is and if you're not actually taught this at a young age you kind of don't really know what you can talk about and what's you don't know there's no normalization i guess is what i'm trying to say of you're listening to just like us the monthly show for lgbt young people it's interesting to think about what life was actually like under section 28 because Mm. we were only about five or six when it got repealed Mm. but i feel like we still probably are seeing the effects of it, even if we didn't mm. actually live directly under it. Definitely, yeah. And I think even though we li- I lived under it for, what, six, seven years, mm. and even then I can still remember incidents of, like, in the playground, mm. pupils would say, use a homophobic slur, for example, mm-hmm. and it just would go totally un- unchallenged. Yeah. Because teachers felt that it wasn't appropriate to bring it up, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, I think in terms of Section 28, actually being in place for like a significant chunk of someone's life. I think Mm -hmm. the big issue, it was just you had nowhere to look for any kind of information. Yeah. Because quite a lot of youth groups got shut down, Mm. LGBT youth groups. Lots of art exhibitions with LGBT content were withdrawn Mm. from galleries. Wow. Yeah, and even though there were no prosecutions under Section 28, uh, nobody actually got convicted of anything because of it. Mm. Um. Most lo- local authority funded organisations like art galleries and youth groups yeah. weren't in a financial position to go take the government to court. I think it's interesting to think about um, the response to Section 28 because yes. that's something that often goes erased, I think. Yes. That the LGBT community did not let it happen quietly. Yes, yes. I mean, Ian McKellen, who's very mm. prominent, he came out just so he could actually like publicly voice his op- opinion. He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And fierce opposition to it and Mm. obviously a lot of other people who like doing wild acts of civil disobedience i guess as you Mm. could say of lesbian protesters abseiling from the public gallery of the house of lords into the chamber just to protest it like yeah on the day the clause passed i think which is it was yeah as mm. it passed in parliament as they voted on it Mm. they abseiled down 
iconic. 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 They are my favourites. Yes, and the next day, uh, lesbian activists, different ones, I believe, Great. stormed the six o'clock news and handcuffed themselves to a TV camera and the new desk. It's almost, it's almost similar to the suffragette movement, which obviously, mm. I guess a lot of people might look at these activists now and thinking, oh, they're just overreacting. I don't see why it's that mm. bad. But it's like, okay, well, these are fundamental things. And mm. obviously, I feel like now in 2018, people wouldn't think they're as ludicrous as in the 1980s. But. Yeah, definitely. You're listening to Just Like Us, the monthly show for LGBT young people. So we've talked a lot about kind of the background to Section 28 um, and kind of where it came from, what it actually did. And I guess it's, it's quite hard for us because we can't really speak about what it was like living under Section 28 because mm. we were barely alive. Um, but there is still a legacy of Section 28. Do we want to talk about that and kind of how even now, I guess, like sex ed and things mm. like that, people just don't really talk about it. Definitely. Like you will yeah. talk to so few people that have actually had like LGBT specific um, P- PSHE classes. Like mm. I know that I remember when I was like 18, there was one passing me- mention to, oh, if you're not gonna be in a heterosexual relationship that's fine but like that's it seven words yeah (laughs) yeah that was it that was it like i didn't listen to any Mm. sex ed classes because i was so firmly believing that i was a lesbian i was like there's nothing that you can say to me that i Mm. will need to know Mm, definitely Um, i'm bisexual actually which i didn't know which i regret a lot of things because i don't know anything about contraception now (laughs) oh dear i mean i am a lesbian and so i can confirm that 100 percent of my sex ed was useless Mm. yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah and i guess because because so few people want to actually talk about lgbt mm. like the nitty-gritty of it because they think so few people are actually going to need to know it but like for the people that do need to know it they really need to know it oh, like definitely yeah sitting in sex ed if you're say asexual mm. and just n- everything like going over your head because you don't understand why it's mm. a thing that you need to know like if you just don't know because nobody's ever told you in schools about what it is to be asexual or trans or pan like you're just not gonna pay yeah. attention you're not gonna understand and you're gonna be at such a disadvantage yeah it's the equivalent of going around your school taking out 10 percent of the kids and saying you can't have sex ed mm. that would be that would be stupid as a policy mm. but it's functionally what's happening to LGBT exactly people. exactly um actually if you look at the stats only 13 percent of people say they covered sex ed um that was relevant to lgbt issues mm. which is silly very, because very. Thirteen percent. That that's that's not even a fifth. No, it's not. You're listening to Just Like Us, the monthly show for LGBT young people. So only thirteen percent of pupils, as you said, mm. were actually felt that they had been taught how to be part of a healthy same-sex relationship. Mm. And what's so obviously there's a lot of focus on the students and how inequipped they are. But then we also really need to talk about the fact that. Like, nine in ten teachers say they, they want to tackle homophobic bullying, but they just don't really know how. 94% haven't actually had any training on how to do so. Mm. So, I don't know if you really know about, like, or if you have any experiences, but I definitely do of teachers wanting to support LGBT students, but then clearly not knowing what to do. I think lots of teachers just have no idea, or not no idea, but just feel like they're not equipped enough to... Mm use the right terms and yes. sort of say the right things yes which is fair enough because if i wasn't lgbt i probably wouldn't either exactly exactly um, and it's just getting that training in place and making sure teachers feel confident mm. in their ability to combat it i suppose you also need to actually educate the teachers on how to deal with things and how to actually properly teach people and actually speak to lgbt students mm. like it just goes all directions like clearly section 28 has had a huge legacy mm. that's impacted everyone. Like, you can't just say, oh, it's just affecting the children, it's just affecting this group of people. Like, no, it's very much affecting everyone for something that will ultimately be of the detriment to LGBT students. Yeah, so it, it doesn't just affect students. Yeah. And actually, it doesn't just affect schools, it affects yeah. the whole cross-section of society. I, I mean, like, we've got some quotes down from the actual legislation where it mm. calls homosexuality as a pretended family relationship, which... This is, again, an audio medium, so you can't see the air quotes, mm. but there's, I hope you can tell how how sarcastic I'm trying to be, because there's nothing pretend about the genuine, like, love that gay people have. Mm. Like, 
it, it's just it's very frustrating to think that only 30 years mm. is frustratingly yeah. like that's so frustratingly recent it's just scary very and the very. fact that i think the fact that it turned around so quickly from being quite tolerant to being quite intolerant mm. kind of mirrors almost the trends we're seeing now yes where i think a lot of lgbt people feel as though things right now with the climate of trumpism and con- conservatism mm. and like far right extremism yeah. yeah feel as though it's that kind of point so as we've seen and as we've just talked about section 28 has a very impactful lasting legacy mm. and the thing with legacies is that if you don't actually talk about them or fight them they just keep going on mm, and i think it really needs to be looked at how we combat the legacy of section 28 yeah definitely no 100 percent. i think with a lot of like civil rights movements or like general movements for equality people think that when it's legally equal it's then okay yes which experience shows that it isn't it's not uh so i think yeah it is really important to combat the legacy of section 28 and i guess that can be through things as simple as just trying to educate the people around you as Mm. best as you can and just Mm. talking about lgbt issues and making it a normal thing yeah absolutely and i mean we go into schools to talk to Mm, students so we have a very like on the ground approach and really it's it's quite astonishing how just like us can actually go into schools and talk explicitly about being LGBT and what that's like. Mm. Whereas 15 years ago, that would have literally been illegal. Yeah, that would, like, we couldn't have existed as an organization. Exactly. Like, even if you can't do something like that, if you're not part of Just Like Us, I mean, support charities that Mm. do go into schools to talk about that and support the people Mm. that are in a place to actually talk to LGBT students. Stonewall was made sort of in response to Section 28. Ah. That's when it was founded. I didn't know that. Yeah. Morning. See, that's the thing. That's the thing, yeah. Just talking about... That's kind of the start, isn't it? Yeah, it's and just, just... Keeping, up, keeping everyone aware of, like, the fact that it was a thing that happened. Mm. And we shouldn't forget it until its legacy is gone. Yes. Which I sense may be a long time, sadly. Um, yeah. But it's up to all of us just to fight it, I think. Mm. As best as we can. As best as we can. Yeah. Well, on that note... It's been lovely speaking to you. Thank you. Lovely speaking to you too. Thank you to everybody for listening. Yes. Um, We don't know who the next presenter will be after this. I should still hopefully be here. You will hopefully be here. I may or may not be. Who knows? It'll be a big surprise. It's exciting for all of us. Yeah. um, Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to Just Like Us, the monthly show for LGBT young people. The show was hosted by Cloda and Nora, produced by Samantha and Rosie, and edited by Daniel and Cloda. The music was by Twisterium. We come into schools too. Young people, teachers and parents can find us at www.com.